We're now going to start modeling the data that we're going to work with in this application. And it's going to be pretty simple. We already have this user model here in the Django models.py file. And that extends the abstract user from Django. And that's going to allow us to customize this in the project if we want to. We're going to add a second model now. And that's going to be called a contact model. So that's going to inherit from Django's models.model class. Now what we want to build in this application is the idea that a user can add a contact. And that user is going to be some kind of authenticated user in the application and they can manage their own contact list and a contact is going to consist of a name and an email address. So let's start modeling this just now. We're going to have a name which is going to be a models.car field in Django and car fields take a max length parameter and we're going to set that equal to a value of let's say 100 here and as well as a name we're going to add an email field here and Django has a special email field in the models package that allows you to add an email address. So that's the base information that we're going to add through a form and use HTMX later in the series. I want to add a couple of extra fields. We're going to add a created at field and that's going to capture when this contact was added to the database. That's going to be a date time field in Django and we're going to specify auto now add and set that to true. And what auto now add is going to do is it's basically going to set the timestamp when the entry was actually created in the database and it's going to do that automatically when the new row is added. In other words, when we save a new contact to the database. And there's one more field we want to add and that's a link between the contact and the user that added that contact and that's going to be in the form of a foreign key in the database. So let's add that now to the contact. We're going to add a link to the user and that's going to be a models.foreign key. And the first argument to the foreign key is the model we want to link it to and that's going to be the user model here. And we can specify an on delete keyword argument to specify the behavior when the parent user is deleted. So when the user is deleted, we want to also remove the contacts. So we're going to use models.cascade here. And I want to add one more argument and I'm going to do this on a new line. And that's going to be an argument called related name. Now the related name is going to tell us what we want to do when we have a user and we want to fetch all of the contacts. So in other words, here we have the contact model and the user is related to that contact. But sometimes we want to go in the other direction. We want to take one user and fetch all of their contacts. The related name specifies how we do this. And we're going to give it a related name of contacts in this case. And that's going to allow us to query from one user by using a statement such as this in Django, user.contacts.all. Now there's a couple of extra things I want to add here. So what I'm going to do is add a meta class to this contact. And Django meta classes allow you to specify some behavior on the model. And there's lots of different options that you can use here on the meta class. I'm going to add one called unique together. And we're going to set that to a tuple here. And it's going to contain two of the fields. And that's going to be user and email. Now basically what this is going to do is it's going to create a constraint in the database. And that constraint is going to prevent a contact being added with the same reference to the user and the same email address. In other words, if I'm logged into the application and I create a contact with a given email address, and then I try to create that same contact again with the same email address, this constraint is going to stop that happening at the database level. And that makes sense because emails are unique. There's no point in me adding a second email address that's exactly the same as one I've added before. So that constraint is going to protect that from happening in the database. Now the reason it's unique together is because two different users might add a contact that has the same email address. So we can't make the email field unique, but the email does have to be unique for that user. In other words, they cannot have added that email in the past. And I want to add one final field here and that's a dunder string method. And that's going to display the contact as the name of the contact and the email address. So in Django, once you've created the model, what you can do is you can run the make migrations command. That's python manage.py make migrations. That's going to create a migration file called contact.py. Actually, it's called 0002 contact.py. And then you can run the migration to actually change the database with the migrate command. And that applies that migration, as you can see here. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the SQLite database. So let's bring back the sidebar here. And here we have db.sqlite. I'm going to open that database. And we can do that because I have an extension on VS Code for this. And it's called SQLite Explorer. And if we go to the database, we can now see we have this contacts table. And if you look at that table, you can see it contains the columns for the ID, the name, the email and created at fields that we added in the Django model. So this model is now represented in our database. Let's now connect the contact model with the Django admin. 
In order to do that, we can go to admin.py and we can bring that model in. So at the top from contacts.models, let's import the contact model. And I'm going to copy this line of code to the line below and we're going to add the contact model to the Django admin. Now in order to view these, one last step here is I'm going to create a super user in Django. So we can do that with python manage.py and it's the create super user command. I'm going to create one called admin and that administrator is going to have a password of test. Don't do that in production. Once that's created, we can then run the server and go to the Django admin. And this is the page that we get when we log in. If we go to the contacts page, you can see we don't have any at the moment, but we can add a new contact at the top right. And we have the options for the contact name and the email address. And we can also link that to any user that we have in the database. So we now have the database set up and we have the Django model for interacting with these contacts. In the next video, we're going to display the contacts for the authenticated user on a page in this Django application. And after we've done that, what we're going to do is build a search functionality using HTMX. And we're going to show some of the most important attributes of HTMX when we do that. And we're also going to show some cool modifiers that we can use with those attributes. So that's coming up soon. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you in the next video.